So I wanted to show you this situation here because you might not believe me otherwise, but this is a very tiny little creek that's near the Aturia River. It's a place called Scott's Creek and it is full of fish. It's a little bit lighter tinted dark black water than the rest of the stuff in this river system. And the fish here are just mind blowing. Let me just show you because you might not believe me. They're just all over in my lap. This site was unbelievably beautiful with so many cardinal tetras swimming around in this one little part of the creek. Now this was incredibly fast moving water for these fish, but there were little eddies and pools where the fish were really um, sort of concentrated. And it was really cool to see them here. This is actually probably one of the southernmost known locations of this species. And it's actually downriver of the Rio Branco, which is significant because it was always thought that the Rio Branco was a biological barrier for the transfer of species that are, you know, more blackwater species. Um, also here were several of these fish that we've shown you already. Um, the Aquidens pallidus, the pale cichlids. Uh, these are little little dwarf pikes um, recently redescribed into the genus Wallacea from Crenocicla. Um, normally, uh, I try to keep myself out of these videos, but it was just absolutely unbelievable. And these cardinal tetras in particular were sort of swarming around me, <laughs> um, looking for anything that I stirred up and actually sort of pecking at my skin, kind of like those expensive uh, exfoliating treatments where you stick your feet into a bowl of catfish. It was like that with these cardinal tetras. They were just constantly picking at my skin and looking for things to eat around me that I was stirring up. That fish that just went by was an Aquidens pallidus, a pale cichlid, that is anything but pale at this time uh, because they were in breeding colors and were really staking out territories and doing all of the awesome breeding behavior. There were also a lot of Hemigramastictus here, red base tetras, which are just mind-blowingly beautiful in this color water. We were at a different site at Aturia earlier in the day where the, the black water is much more red and it really sort of washes out that red color. But when you see it like this, in this black water that's only slightly tinted, those fish are just absolutely gorgeous. Just such beautiful fish, Hemigramastictus with the, the red tails and the little freckle on their side. Here they are again, just absolutely beautiful beautiful fish. And this was a really cool place because the creek was sort of long and thin, like you could probably lay across it and occupy, you know, across the entire bank of the creek. But it was full of so many different fish that were really just using this habitat all at the same time, just kind of in the, the structure of the log jams and the leaf litter and the creek bank, the places where, where it was overhanging a little bit, the fish were really utilizing that habitat and um, just, you know, doing these very natural fish behaviors. These are Curry Metopsis pallida, uh, a species that, that I had not seen before in the wild or in the aquarium trade. Uh, they're a little bit harder to find, less common, and um, a really cool fish to see. Again, the, they were swarming around, <laughs> biting my flesh, which was really cool. And um, it's important to note that the gentle capture of many species of home aquarium fish from the Rio Negro region really drives conservation by providing sustainable livelihoods to rural families because it gives people an economic incentive. There's that aquidin cichlid, just beautiful. An economic incentive to protect the habitat because the fish themselves depend on a good, clean, healthy ecosystem. See him chasing away all of these other fish because they want to spawn here. And it, it allows people to protect the habitat because it's their source of income and their source of livelihood and prevent the incursion of environmentally destructive industries from moving into the area. Things like uh, slash and burn farming, timber harvest, gold mining, things that are rampant in other parts of the Amazon are mostly prevented from, from happening around here because the people who are doing the fishing activity are depending on it as a, a source of revenue and the fishing activity can't occur if those environmentally destructive things are destroying the fish populations and destroying the ability of the populations to renew themselves. And many of these species of fish, particularly these, these small tetras, have a very resilient population, very resilient to, to fishing pressure, because these fish spawn when the water levels rise up into the trees and in the flooded forest and there's a vast expansion of habitat. And that allows the fish to really take advantage of it by breeding. They have all this extra habitat and all this extra space, so they breed, and then when the water levels recede, a lot of those fish are trapped, and that's what the people are making their living, catching these fish. 
And so a lot of those fish aren't going to make it into the next year anyway. So it doesn't have an impact on next year's population when you remove fish. But it sure does have an impact on people's ability and um, incentive to protect the environment. So that's a very significant impact in this part of the world where there's not a lot of sources of livelihood that aren't destructive to the environment. So it's important to note that that activity is happening here and just absolutely gorgeous habitat and absolutely a privilege to see these animals in their natural habitat in the wild and we're so happy to be able to share it with you. And uh, thank you for following Project Piaba and we hope you continue to do so. These are a bunch of Hemigramus tetras, mostly Hemigramus annulus. Um, there were some other species of Hemigramus mixed in here, but they can be sort of difficult to tell apart unless you happen to have them in a cup in front of you um, that you can see them a little bit better. And up in these roots, kind of on the overhanging creek bank, there were actually a lot of splash tetras, Capella natureri, um, that I had to like really look for. That I'm not sure what that one was that darted in <laughs> right there. But up along the top of the creek bank, those are cardinal tetras. But uh, you'll see Capella natureri right up along the edge. 